activity in the streets. Uh, you didn't have a real job, but you were working, right? Right. Yes. How did that activity translate into what you do now? Wow. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a good question. It translates, believe it or not, it translates in a lot of ways. And, 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 I, and I really think that that's probably one of, the, one of the main reasons why I excelled in retail the way I did the way I did so quick. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because as, I, as I started working in retail, I started to recognize the similarities in what retail was about versus what selling drugs was. I mean, it, it is what it is. Okay, in retail, in retail, you can buy merchandise in, in bulk, at a cost. And you put it on the shelf, buy it in bulk, you, you do what you got to do to it, and you sell it in the streets at a, at a price. So once I realized the similarities in it, I saw it. I just took off. I didn't go into the stock market. <laughs> What was that? I'm sorry. I said thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard that one. <laughs> but you had another question? Yeah, it, it, it wasn't just you selling drugs on the street by yourself. That's the one point. Well, you had a little help. I had a lot of help. I had a little help when I was selling drugs, but because I never had a job before, I was able to become in a leadership role and work and to be able to lead and to be able to supervise and to delegate and all those things was because I reflected back to when I was selling drugs, I was considered a lieutenant of a, a large drug operation, okay? And I was the one in charge of giving out the drugs, collecting the money, putting the people in the place they're supposed to be, watching the entire operation. And that's where my leadership skills came in. And I just took those and I applied them to the real world. What would you say to those who are um, espousing these drugs? I would say they need, to, they need to find something else to do. <laughs> and there's no other way to put it. You know, first of all, you got you have to want to change yourself before anything else is going to help you. And, and if someone is working with the three strikes law, I mean, I would think that would be enough of, of a reminder, so to say, you know, for that person to, to, to not do what they've been doing all this time. I mean, I really don't have an answer for that, you know, because like I said, you gotta want to change inside in order to change. And if you're working with a three strikes law, then that should be enough inspiration for you to not want to Spend the rest, of your, rest of your life in prison. Yes. As a mom of a 19-year-old son, I heard you say, "How did you have a 19-year-old? She was 19." and I know that's very tendering to my son. So, as a mom. When, when is he going to get it? I don't wait, wait, wait. Well, <laughs> uh, the advice I would give to you, uh, the advice I would give to you is I would probably tell you to continue the same things that my mom did. You know, always talk about what's right and wrong. Always, you know, one thing, throughout my journey and as you read, the one thing, the most important thing to me when I was going through all that stuff, when I was doing what I was doing, um, I knew I was killing my mom. I knew it was free. I knew that she raised me better and that I, I shouldn't have been doing the things I did. So even though I was doing these things that were wrong, I mean, in the back of my mind, I always could hear in my mom's voice. What are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing it? And I never forgot that. And then it just came to a point in my life where I, I, I decided that enough was enough and I was going to do something right. And I still had that upbringing and that background that my mom raised me to revert back to, to know where to go and how to do it. I work in, in high school, and so I'm always interested as, you know, you said you dropped out at 16. What was education 
like you all the way through that age 16. Up until 16? In school. <laughs> Education to me, I would say up until I was about 14, was good. I like you know, I like learning. I like to um, study. And I, and I like to I like to accomplish things in school, like class work and stuff like that. I, I like the feedback that I would get from my teachers if, if I did a good job on a, on a report or a book or whatever or my work. I like the accomplishment of that. But I mean, I, and I really I don't have an answer for you. I'm 14 years old. For whatever reason, I, school was not an interest of me anymore. It was more about being popular, more about hanging out, and it just happened. I think that's what you guys saw. Why did you choose the title Driven? What does that say about you before and after? I chose the title Driven um, because, again, you really got to read the book. <laughs> um, I, I chose the title Driven because basically that's what it was. I, I had to drive. I was driven to succeed and not to, to continue to repeat the same things that were needed me in the prison. You know, I, no matter what, I just had to drive to, to plow forward. And what was the other question? <laughs> Uh, you know, if you're driven, you could be driven for a negative type of they True. You that be successful. Or, True. you know, in a positive direction as well. Right. It says something about your personality type, but, you know, how did you change the direction? Why did you turn? <laughs> well, here, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll I tell you this right now. Okay. One of the main reasons, I'll give you this. One of the main reasons for me finally deciding to change my life was because I, I the last time I went to prison, I had a, at that time, probably a, a year or 18 months old time. And, and the way I looked at things from the time she was born to now, were totally different than where I looked at them before she was born. And I couldn't stand being locked up away from my child, not being able to be a good father to your children. And that's one of the main reasons why I decided to change my life. Yes? If, you, uh, if the clock would be turned backwards and you were 14 again, knowing what you know, what you know, and how you are 14 years old, knowing what I know now, you can trouble. <laughs> um, I'll do a lot of things different. A lot of things different. You know, although I don't believe that, I believe the things that I've gone through have made me the man I am today. But I would do a lot of things different. You know, for one, I would uh, I would love to turn the clock back and be 16, 14, 16 years old again, just to at least finish my school. You know, just to finish high school and, and, and possibly <coughs> move on into higher learning in, in college. That, that's one thing I regret um, to this day, is that I didn't spend any time in college. And I think that kind of, I was lucky because that kind of, by me not being in college, I'm missing a part of, of the professional part of my business that I do. Do you have any plans to go back now? It's not too late. It's not too late, but unfortunately, my job is very, very demanding, and it's like I have to be there all the time. I, I do have plans, I just haven't put anything together yet because I got to have the time. You have the opportunity, and with the company now that gave you the opportunity to um, mentor other people coming out of the prison system. Yes, I do. I, I've, done, I've been doing that since I became an assistant manager with the company. Uh, I've also given people just like me, uh, as far as the felony convictions or whatever, I've given them, you know, chances by employing them and, and they me. And, mm -hmm. You know, so it is what it is. Thank you.
business, and you, have you ever considered setting up some type of network with other businesses to be, you know, more accepting to give a second chance to offenders? Well, unfortunately, I, I can do I can do as much as I can by working with you all as Workforce Alliance, working with other programs like uh, Building Bridges, Columbus House. I work I work with them a lot. Uh, Crossroads. I, I'm going back and work with them, but I'm not in control, you know of the entire company. So, you know, I can't really, I can only do as far, I can only go as far as my store and, 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 and what I'm in charge of. But as a company, I can't go, I don't have a decision to do What could the prison be doing that uh, help people while they're in custody to be better prepared to get out? Set up more shop workshops like uh, um, you know more more programs within the within the prison facility that shows people how to how to develop good work ethic and, and how to, I mean they can start by showing people how to fill out an application you know they can start by showing people how to conduct themselves in an interview you know. Uh, a lot of things that I do now when I go to uh, building bridges and all you know, these other companies is uh, I talk to their clients about me as an employer, what do I look for when I interview You know, I mean, you got to know, first of all, that if you walk into an interview with a new rag on, chances are you're probably going to get that job. Okay? Or if your pants are hanging below your body, you know. Chances are you're not going to get that job, and I, and I just try to I just try to give them hindsight of what I look at as a, as an employer because I'm the one who offers a job or not in my facility. You know, if I say no, you don't get hired. If I say yes, you get hired. So when I interview someone, you know, I'm looking to see uh, do they get good eye contact. You know, how do they respond? Are they slouched in their chair or do they sit up straight? You know, their feedback, how is their feedback? What are the, what are the, the answers that they give? I mean, because personally, I mean, I, resumes are good, this is what I tell them, resumes are good. But I can't tell off a resume whether you're gonna to come to work every day. You know, I can't tell whether you're gonna get along with the next person or whether you're gonna follow direction and, and work hard. I can't tell that from a resume. So the majority of the decisions I make are based off physical interviewing with the person. And so I, I think they, that's what they can do by starting to at least show people before they even get to the world how to present themselves the best possible way. Amazon.com, 
Barnes and Noble, Borders, all those major bookstores online. And you can also flag me down and buy a copy because I always have <laughs> 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 One more question, one more question. Yes. What led you to write? What led me to write? Yeah. When I realized that I had a story to tell and that my story might be able to help someone achieve what I have and more. And that's what the overall objective is behind this book, is to show people that, you know, don't give up. Continue to be successful in life as long as you have to drive and the, the the want to do. So again, thank you. Thank you all. Bill, Bill promised you when we began this that he wanted to have an opportunity to celebrate success. I think both Camille and Robert remind us that there's no substitute for self-determination, but there's also no substitute for the work that all of you do in this room to support the person when they're ready to change their lives. So thank you all. Uh, and as part of that, we talk about our youth, and since I heard is unique in the fact that over here we have Joelle, Shakira, Jennifer. Oh, <laughs> translates into good practice, and that's why we use you on our council. And finally, uh, one last plug. We do an annual event as part of the Youth Council called the Youth Net Info Exchange. This year we'll be at the Job Corps, uh, and we will be having our event on the morning of Thursday, March 12th, if you're all done. Um, I am done. If there is no business from the floor, I'd like to conclude this. Thank you. Yeah.